Today on Drink Why You Think, we are going to be talking about, yikes, the scary process of giving feedback to our team and receiving feedback. <laughs> During like the time when everybody's <laughs> quitting and, and uh, changing professions and, and fun stuff. So maybe you, shouldn't, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be giving feedback. Maybe this is a dangerous time to give feedback. Uh, but we're doing it for the first time in quite a long time. So long. It's 18 probably, years for you, right? No, we used to do it before then. Oh, it's you it's been like, like 15 years, but it's been a long years. time. Nine but, years for me. Uh, we're going to talk about feedback. We made a decision as a firm to start doing a more formalized review process. And we are kind of halfway through it, most of the way through it. So probably have some initial takes on how it's going, what decisions drove us to kind of go and do, uh, put some feedback mechanisms in place. Let's talk about that. But also, cheers, dude. We are out kind of doing an in the wild Drink while you think at the OG original craft brewing of Atlanta. Yeah, as you see that right, Sweetwater Brewing. We are at Sweetwater. Anyone in Atlanta, probably most people across the country know Sweetwater. So we are here having beers. Um, Matthew, is anyone sponsoring these beers today? Oh, you got to do all on the podcast. All, oh, yeah. Sorry, do, the, do your I'm thing. Out of the office. All this today on Drink While You Think the weekly happy hour podcast, <laughs> actually conversation, not even podcast. We're two firm owners, he and I, are doing very weird things inside their firm, like putting a review process in place right in the middle of them we're having the most turnover in our entire profession. Matthew, now let's get to who our, our sponsors. sponsors today. Uh, we don't technically have a sponsor, but I'm gonna give us a sponsor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna count I'm gonna count the beer temple, like buying us beers this week. Cause that was this week, believe it or not, dude, that's still this week. So. Drink While You Think, sponsored by TriMerit. TriMerit for all of your research and developing credit needs. TriMerit. Also, if you're ever in Chicago, go to the beer temple. Beer temple, it's like heaven for humans. Especially humans who love beer. For humans and if, who love and beer. if you missed that, the reference was too. This past week, we were on the Unique, the Unique CPAs live podcast, their third anniversary with a bunch of other friends of ours. It was really a lot of fun. So, Randy Crabtree, Tri Merit folks. Thanks, guys. And yeah, all of those at the Beer Temple. Thanks for having us to Chicago. It was great. All right, now we're here. Um, what are you drinking, man? Man, this is a. We went out of the, out of the, our you normal. Go you can't the really get these at the store. It's kind of nice. These are cool because we're drinking some sweet water beers that you don't normally get. Um, the name of mine, it was a collaboration, and it's essentially, it's a Belgian hazy IPA, which is kind of funky. Um, I, can't I can't remember, remember what, what it's called. called. I don't care what it's called. Okay, I remember mine. Mine's an Imperial Stout. It has vanilla and chocolate. It's called Laser Bean. I think that's the nod to the coffee notes or whatever. You know what I noticed so. about Matthews? It's... It was 11%. <laughs> That's how I roll, man. That's how you roll, dude. Yeah, this is a... I recommend it. Yeah, this is a... This oh. is, for those of you outside of Atlanta, Sweetwater is probably the largest uh, brewery in Atlanta. It uh, absolutely microbrewery is. Microbrewery and um, one that kind of put us on the map for microbrews. So uh, stop by when you... I'll you're also here. say, too, they were an Acuity client they once a long, long time client, ago. So. We pride ourselves on working with many of the great Atlanta the companies. entrepreneurial success stories. No success due to our part, but we got to hang out with them and have but, beers. But, and also, it's about to be 420, and we're at 420, it which is, is yeah. kind of awesome. So. so they have a special beer called 420. They're known for their 420 Fest. It's almost 420. You can see on most of their logos and things, the, there's probably a 420 in there. I don't know what that means. If you have any questions, please reach out and contact Scott Scarano. Uh, Matthew. Yeah. So. Performance reviews. How do they, how do they come about? Like when, when, when do you feel like we made the decision that we have to do this? Oh, I feel like we felt like we had to grow up a little bit. Um, it, um, you know, I think a lot of it was in part to launching international. I, even though we're doing the domestic reviews first, was the kind of crazy thing. And, um, you know, historically we we had hired really experienced people, you know, 20 years into their career. Um, and we're heavily, heavily just a service-based organization. So everybody was working with clients and they were all kind of already professionals and kind of working independently. We've got 25 
30 people now that work on the business that need career development. We've got people that are starting at kind of like coming in and wanting to kind of progress through levels now. And they're kind of like not settled in who they want to be. Um, and uh, it just felt like time to grow up, didn't it? There was some maturity needed for um, us, right? for, for you and I, for sure. There, I, I had, I'd been kind of burned by the review process. Candidly, I put, uh, yeah. I put one in place that I, I literally copied our old Arthur Anderson one, my old Matthew and I's old employer, and I, I brought that into Acuity. It wasn't right. It was too heavy-handed. It was, um, and so I, it, it actually created more problems than it did, you know, solutions and helping. I, I think. So it kind of freaked me out. I backed away from it. Um, I, I think the thing to me that really drove us is a maturing for sure. But like many ways that we all mature, someone needs to tell you you need to mature. And for me, we started really focusing this year on doing employee surveying. And I, I the survey results came back so resounding of team members saying, I want to be reviewed. I want to have some feedback. Yeah, that's. It, it uh, just that's, it came back and was like a for me a punch in the face. We talked about it. I was. Um, it was I, like on our second, I mean, second, ENPS survey, and it was like, give us feedback, people. I was. Um, and so I also lead at, at Acuity a, a regular leadership development program. It's volunteer. Anybody at Acuity it doesn't have to be a tech designated leader. You can be anyone at Acuity, and you can come and join us. And we're doing a session right now. I wrote a book called Radical Candor, but the point was in yesterday's session, we talked about feedback, like how to ask for feedback. And one of the questions was, hey, do people, anybody here feel uncomfortable receiving feedback? And everyone said, no, I love feedback. Like I, I really want feedback. And what's interesting is I had to remind myself of that, of where sometimes I think I, I worry that I'm gonna hurt someone's feeling giving hard feedback. I have to remind myself that everybody who works here, I mean, almost everybody that, that was like, I want to hear it, I want to hear it. So I felt like I'd been holding myself back a bit, like, oh, I'm going to upset somebody, or it's so hard to get good people right now. I don't want to give them a harsh word. And the good people, they want it. Oh, they desire they it. They want it bad. Yeah. They want it bad. So um, anyway, we kicked this off. This was a huge Q3 initiative for us. Um, our yeah, HR, our doing, HR manager. We're doing 100 reviews in 30 days. I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, about 30 days, maybe a, a, a few more weeks. Maybe like 40 less. days. But um, and we're really kind of doing a blitz around this. Our HR manager kind of designed a program um, with a really kind of smart cadence and rhythm to it. I guess maybe we'll talk about the parts of what they look like. We are. Sure. Uh, we'll give a shout out to our friends over at Gusto. Oh, we're using their platform, even though we're designing it um, ourselves. Yeah, we're we designed it them. around our company values. So the yep. way that we built it was like we, Amber, who is our HR kind of leader, who's kind of driving this initiative and kind of brought this to our attention. So she gave us a framework where uh, we have five questions around our company values because we have five company values. And then we have five kind of kind of more generic kind of client service uh, type criteria uh, to grade people around and everybody does a self-assessment and then the managers without seeing the self-assessment review and then you go back and kind of reconcile so it's a, it's a yeah. uh, I thought it was so a th healthy so think of the, process. Think of the form this way Th yeah three sections essentially right yeah. three sections first one is around our company values very specific to us how do people rates there the second one that Matthew mentioned is more, I'd call it generic business values. How well do you communicate? How well do you, are, are you a good teammate? So basic, basic, service, basic things you, yeah. you need to have just to function in a business, right? And then the final piece is more around what are your goals for the future? Oh yeah, well, the one in five year goals, right? Yeah, so you start thinking goals. So those are kind of the three components. And the first part of it is the manager performs, I'm sorry, no, I heard that backwards. Employee. The employee does their self-review, submits it. Then the manager does their review, and then those Before get pushed. There, there, there's like a final question on the manager review to look at the self-review to trigger you to do that and then go back through and kind of reconcile what you did and they did and talk about 
and one of the hard, like one of the hardest questions on the review. I've never seen this on a review before. Was asking me as the manager, how are you going to support their goals? <laughs> right, right. What are you going to do to support their? What goals? am I going to do to support the goals that they said they wanted to accomplish in the next five years on their self review? Which was a kind of a it was a great question. It's a very good question. And so it runs in and in, in, in there's I saw it as across these three pieces, especially the first two. There's two components. There's a very objective component. We try to put a rating scale in place so you can do something numeric and just to kind of level set there. I think of it as getting the conversation going by having to rate people on a scale of one to five. Five being the best, one being there's some challenges. Um, and then really there's a spot to where the subjective component of each one of these questions, you, you kind of write a little bit about it. So we'll see how these all play out. I've, I've heard, we'll talk maybe more about that, the way that's structured, how we think that's going so far. Um, but I, that all happens in the span of, probably, like you said, probably six weeks six weeks or so that we're doing all these. And then there's a one-on-one -on -one schedule at the end of these to come back and talk about these together. And so let's move into that. That's the basic structure. Again, leveraging kind of Gusto's framework there because it's been nice and easy, a good repository for it, even though we're, we can go in there and modify how we're asking the all questions. All the questions and, and the scale and all that kind of stuff. So I've gone through at this point, I've done, um, for those I'm doing it for, I've done their reviews, they've done their self reviews. I have not done my one-on-ones yet. I'm waiting until I have to get back from Zurichon. You've got all the way through all yours? So I've done all four, I have four reports. I've done the, they've done their self reviews, I've done their reviews, and for three of them, we've already met with our one-on-ones. Okay, can, so can you share um, all the specific details that all of your team members need to work on? I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah, kidding. <laughs> for sure. No, let's, I mean, we'll, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep especially people. Especially since one of them edits, drink while you think, it'll come out. Yeah. Um, uh, now, talk about how the process has gone so far. And what's been your experience? Because so, you've gone through If all. you step back 50,000 feet, just for a second, like my overall impression was it felt better to think like to spend one, two hours on each of these people's careers personally, right? Like to just to stop and think about their career, like versus the company, right? Uh, think about the company all the time. Like, but to just stop and be intentional about thinking about the four people, and I'm lucky to have just four, <laughs> That, that I get to think about their career and what they said they wanted and how that might fit in and some of the questions that I might want to ask them. So that was, that was one big takeaway for me is how beneficial I found that time um, just to invest in people who had invested in, in acuity so much. The second thing I thought was um, the people that spent the most self-reflective time got more out of it than any input I could have given them. So I had kind of a range of like people that invested in the process, in their self-review. So and let me let me stop you there for a second. Make sure I understand this. So you're 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 saying, is that because? of their own time they put in, or is it because you recognized it and put more effort into your... No, I didn't you, have... You could tell that, I, wow, I, they spent more time, so you were I gonna... didn't have a sense till the one-on-one on, -one on okay. who had put the most time in it because the length of the answers was very similar okay. on like the written part. But it was evident, like the three that I've done, that one of the people in particular had put more time it, like in being really introspective mm. about the process. And when I reflect on the groups that we're in, EO and, and, and the small groups that we're in, that resonates with me. Like when I put the time into a presentation, into a something that I'm doing, I get the most out of it. Like it's not, I don't ever get the most out of when somebody external gives me advice or thoughts or things like that. Like the impact usually comes from being introspective. So that was humbling because I was trying to help people in their career and I felt like the person that moved the needle the most, like in of the people I've met with so far, was the one that was really introspective about it. Gotcha. Do you know okay. what I mean? Yeah, like I got gotcha. I, I just felt like Makes my sense. impact wasn't as strong as I thought it would be. Um, now, everybody appreciated the thoughtfulness and uh, like of us spending time 
individually and thinking about them and their career, I think. But, um, but th those are my two main takeaways was like, I, I enjoyed more than I thought thinking about their career than I would have. And I was less impactful than I thought I would be. They were the most impactful to the process uh, based on their commitment. Interesting. Okay. Uh, that was just my take. I mean, I wish that I would be more impactful, but like, cause I could put the same effort into everybody, but the ones that put the effort in back are the ones that get the most out of it. Like I, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's, it's um, being able to see, you know, spending that time thinking about where you are in your career, kind of having to pause. And I would say that not the formality, but the structure of a review cycle like this, it does force you to like stop. Like it's like, oh, if someone says, hey, can you just give me some feedback on something? You may not take that as seriously, but it's like, oh, we have to go fill out a form. They have to fill out a form. We're gonna compare notes. We're gonna talk about it. Again, we have a great HR leader in Amber who's checking to make sure people are doing this on a timely basis. We had a calendar laid out on when these things had to be done. So there's a formality in the, this is important, it needs to happen. And I, I would assume that that, in some sense, gives people the, like, hey, I need to stop and spend the time. Like, I'm not going to just, hey, in between my meetings while I'm having a quick bite to eat, like, fill it out. Like, it's a, I need to carve out the dedicated time and think about it. And so when people do that, I think when all of us do that, good things come out of it. Great right? things come out of it. It's, it's just, it, it, it really is. There's an intentionality there that's very helpful. So, um, okay, so... How soon, when the two of you both had done your reviews and both team members, like, so you so could, you we could see both done the reviews. How the great soon thing, before you did their one-on-one? -on -one? So it was like, mine was less than a week away okay. for the first three, and it's going to be three weeks away from the last one. But the HR manager is recommending only letting, is allowing people to read them the day before you meet with them. So oh, really? like... So the okay, my written review is given to them before we meet. Okay. So but only I think about that's important. only about a day before. But like a day before, you can choose how much you want. Like everybody can opt that. That's not a gusto setting. That's our HR manager literally going in and managing that because she thinks it's important, like based to, to honor what we want to do. So, um, and two of my three people had read it and one hadn't. It was really interesting to me so far. I was gonna ask that because I'm gonna be in that boat like you are with your final one, whereas I filled mine out, they did theirs, we were traveling this week, we're gonna be traveling next week. It was gonna be like three, almost four weeks since the reviews have been published and I'm not sure if they're gonna get a chance. That they're, if they are reading my, my reviewees, the people who I manage are reading my comments and are having to sit on it for a while and wait. You can you can see okay. in Gusto I'll if it's been see. released to them. Okay, I'll check and see. And then you, I imagine they haven't been released to them, but okay. um, you get okay. to determine when it releases. I, I've had a meeting with one of them and I kind of had that look at it. Like, like, uh, are they going to be acting any different with me? Because they just got a review. I did, I did do that. I did like, I did have a meeting with somebody how you doing? You, you, on you the good? day that their review was that between when it had released and when our review was. So it was kind of like, that is kind of weird. I would recommend that less than 24 hours with the uh, written review before you can give it context with with verbal. But so they should receive it only 24 hours for the review. Just so they're I not, they're just not in like, their head about it. They're not so in their they head. And, yeah, yeah, so they don't go spin or whatever that happens when you see written words because written words come off much harsher than verbal context. Like you get, it was like 80% of context from like, right. like well, I, stuff. Well, I mean, like the... We should be thankful that we've actually got some written words. I mean, of course they should have written words, but just if you just did the rating skills, the numeric ones, those are the ones I think I, I, I'm concerned about because I think people... Well, I think we said 80% of the people in our firm, like 80% of the ratings, they self-rated at a five, like a one to five scale. Like I'm like, come on guys like well, that's gonna be tough. and part of it is the definition of what is a five and it's just more it's oh, so much yeah. more nuanced than we think like yeah because i think our definition was between 80 and 100 percent of the time you're doing something they demonstrate this 
And so that may be an oversight on our part of saying, I think, oh, oh I think we need to clarify that in like, the future. Like, I think correct. we needed to make five, like, some kind of exceptional, like, really 95% so plus of here, the Here's what I thought, and again, this is probably, Amber will talk about all this. The fact that Matt and I talk about it at beers at a brewery. We, should, we, we will have on, these. On a podcast before we give I you know, feedback. Probably, Sorry. But I, 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 she's been so great with leading this process. I, I thought it. Ours, the way ours one to five works, the rating scale, of course, we're accountants. It's in 20% increments, right? That's how you that's how you break down 100%. You take it 20% of the piece over the five. It probably should look more like a bell curve, yeah. shouldn't it? It should be more of a, we have an expectation that most people fall in this area. Well, I and mean, on the far ends, like... in the far ends, hold on, the far ends of a standard deviation or a bell curve, you've got this exceptional people who are, two, three standard deviations out to one side are like, whoa, that's pretty exceptional. And then on the downside, like, hey, we've got some real challenges, but we kind of expect most people to be in this middle area. And if you are, that's awesome. That's wonderful. But like, versus if everybody's there, yeah, the, the 20% chunked across yeah, is I'm, a little. And, and I don't know if, I mean, this is where I feel like you learn stuff after your first year. Like, I feel like our description for a three should be like, you're a great employee that we want to be here. Yeah. And then your description for like, a, or maybe that's a four, like maybe there should be three categories. <laughs> I mean like, there's like either like a, say if we was a one, two, three, this is basically it. You're either a two, which is like, you're a great person that you want to be here. Or you're a three, which is like, you're like the person everybody points to as like the ideal person or one is like you need some improvement in this area, like <laughs> you know what I right. mean? Like, because I think all of okay. The, if you get a five, fi I think all the ones like we've already had conversations. With, if you right? get a Hopefully. five, you should be taking over. You should be running the firm. <laughs> Please, you means you're that means you're kicking our butts, right? You're, you're probably if you're, if you're like, there's probably some ways we could change it a bit. But I do remember going back to reviews we've had back at Arthur Anderson. That's how they used to do it one through five and if you were a three that means you were exactly what the firm expected and you were doing the right thing and i they drilled that into us yeah and people still freaked the hell out people were like i can't be a three i've never had a c in my life in college i mean i had plenty of them i've never had a c in my life i've never been average and no matter how hard i remember a big ass firm like anderson used to drill that into us it, people would flip out flip out right so i that may always be the numeric side may always be challenging. I, I, I could I, be. I, a, I think so. I, I think the words are so much more important, and the context is so much more important that we have to make sure we we, we, we focus on that. Well, okay. So since I have not done any one-on-one -on -one reviews, uh, maybe we'll finish here. Can you, when you're in the one-on-one, -on -one, can you give some thoughts or advice about how you structured the one-on-one, -on -one, like what you what worked, what didn't work, like well, what's... I, I, um, I, they all three went very differently. Okay. So one of the people wanted to give the context on their self-review first. They wanted to give the context of their self-review, talk about how they were thinking about it, and talk, th that was the one that had given the most time. Okay. Right? So they had invested a lot of time in the self-review, and so I had to acknowledge that, right? Yeah, and yeah. do that. Yeah. And then I went through, and did kind of point by point, like where where I thought we diverged. Um, I'm trying to focus on really. I feel like if people get one nugget out of a, a review, we win, right? So I'm trying to focus on what's the one nugget. What's the one right? thing? Like, that, yeah. Max two, like like three, you're lost, right? Because then they lose the one that you really want them to yeah. work on. So that was. That was great on the one. On the other one, they hadn't seen my review, so I'd, I did a, like kind of the overview and walk them through it. The other one had seen my review, so I kind of started with the 50,000 foot view of like, these are, these are like the big traits, and then I walked through the whole review kind of. For all of them though, I ended up walking through the self reviews and not like one by one, but like, I did go through the process of walking through my review and their self reviews and seeing if there was anything like kind of divergent while I was doing that. Um, and just 
whatever came to mind uh, about those. So I was trying not to over-engineer it. I tried not to over-prep for them. Right. And then I did that. And then because I had people on the leadership team, uh, several of these finished before the hour, I took the time to ask them some questions that I had. Um, what kind so of questions? So th- 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 not, things that were... Things you're, not, that, you're not collecting the questions. Huh? I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm not, the things that were clearly off script. This, this is typical Matthew, by the way. He went off script, off yeah, process. I don't even. I'm like, I don't even want to tell you this because I haven't told you this. What? Things come well, out here on drink while you think. Okay. I, listen, people. Hold on. Time out. People, if you don't think we talk about everything here on drink while you think, we do. We, talk, we okay. tell you everything before. We've talked to Amber again. Apologies, our HR manager. Before you've even told me, what did you what did you ask these people? Uh, I asked them two questions that I don't know that you're going to be happy about. Oh Lord! I asked. Uh, so our leadership team this year, for context, is participating in profit sharing for the first time. So I asked them, did we miss the mark on profit sharing, and would they have preferred some way to buy into Acuity? Like some, we've talked about employee ownership before, like as a structure. So I was just curious, like if they had their way, would they take profit sharing? Which to me is the same, like actually better cash flow than (laughs) than ownership right now. Okay. Or would you have employee ownership? Okay, and that was the... First question. That was the first question. Second question. Oh, you're going to hate this fucking question. You hate it when I talk about this. Okay. Then I asked them, if they were me, who would I spend my time on investing in being the next leader or CEO of Acuity? Oh, I don't, oh yeah. Well, that wasn't that. on the CEO. That wasn't at the C-level. Yeah, what? So who on this leadership? Why would I hate that? Oh, you wouldn't hate we, it, but we, that's we, how... We, we've been trying to get, trust me, we've been trying to replace ourselves no, for no. a long time. So two of them, I asked that question too. <laughs> I asked, who should I invest my time in to be the next CEO of Acuity if we're talking about a five to 10 year horizon. I thought those, I mean, so I, I, okay, like, okay. I was talking about their career and they asked me if there was anything I was curious about and I was like, yeah, this is the things that keep me up at night. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so Cause I, employee I, I, ownership I, 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 I have responses, and, and I have CEO. responses to this, okay? Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, you, you better, you better I'm sorry, dude. Don't be, don't be sorry, okay. No, this is, I, I, I did not plan to do that with him because Matthew. I should have talked to you about Matthew. that probably before I talked to him. Maybe, but Matthew, like, first of all, you you did tell me about some of those conversations. Oh, I you did. did not tell me that you prompted the question. Oh yeah. You laid that out there like those were just solicited. Like so, it's point by. Hey, guess what? So and so said. So and so said. And, and this was in a good way of like their desire to grow and to be part of the business and all this. I didn't realize you had like, oh, oh you, no, no, no. You that was before my one on one. That was just from somebody's one on one. That was not even one of my one on ones that had that comment. So here's I, the thing here's the thing Matthew asked great questions. He, he, he asked great questions. Whether they're part of the truck going by, I'm going to be curious about whether they're the appropriate question to ask in someone's review or here's another thing that Matthew is really good at being well-intentioned and like not being able to execute like I don't know how to no, execute no, no, those no, things no 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 well no that's le- what I'm thinking like, leading questions oh no these weren't leading these are pretty good they're, they're pretty good but also let's say you're let's say you're in their shoes and if you ask me if I'm a young, per, you know, young person and I'm looking to be more invested in the company, which do you prefer, cash profit share or to buy in? I mean, what are you going to tell the owner? Oh, okay. oh I want to be bought in. I mean, you can, that is that is a very, uh, I mean, you're. I didn't think of it from that perspective. I was more concerned with it. And I'm I not, I'm I not saying you got the wrong answers, but I'm just saying like that to me, that's a very. Uh, I'm worried about being able to execute on that. I, I know, I know, okay. I know, I know. He's, this is, this is what, you know. This is what he has to do. <laughs> I wanted to follow a script because I told I some folks. I would recommend I, I told a some, script. I told some I folks off, yesterday. I was off. I'm terrible when I'm off script too. I, you know me, our big discussion yesterday was this. One of them was, 
how comfortable are you with silence in a conversation? You are uncomfortable with it. <laughs> you cannot do it. I can't. I can't. And guess I what? I get to give Kenji crap about this all the time. He'll ask a question in an 11 person meeting and he will wait a tenth of a second before like minutes. going on. He cannot wait. I wait longer than that. You can't wait. You cannot. Not very long. I don't, I wait longer than that, but not very long. Dude, However. You start getting uncomfortable at a tenth I of a just, second. I just, I want to fill the room. I don't want it, I don't want it to be uncomfortable. <laughs> so what ends up happening is I screw myself up because I start talking and next thing you know, I'm supposed to be there giving tough feedback and no one's talking. And so then I start, oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's, uh, so to me, a script, a playbook, and I was, what was I doing there in that last question? I was asking Matthew for what's a good playbook to run these one-on-ones and what did he give me? Hey, by the way, I went off script on a couple of places and you're gonna be pissed. Thank you very much, <laughs> Matthew. We're hoping this year goes well. Now, I'll leave it at this with two points for everybody before we rate our beers and go back and get more. <laughs> this is a really good beer. <laughs> is, um, I can't have more though. I have to go lighter for the next one. We sure. will come back with you. I think we're gonna have some really interesting takeaways um, for firms, for any businesses about reviews. And we'd love to just share this. I, I, I really am glad we're doing this. We're gonna make a bunch of mistakes and glad we're doing this. But we're gonna have some, we're midstream right now. We just thought we'd share it because it's been very Thanks top for all of the mind. employees putting up with us right now. Thank Jeez. you so much, I mean, for, for going through this. And we're, we're getting such good feedback about ways that we improve acuity, which is great, which is why we do this. But we'll have some more feedback for anyone watching the podcast about how it's going. The second thing is, and again, thank, I cannot thank Amber enough for oh, her yeah. leadership in this process is, she was very clear with everyone, this is what's called a benchmark year, which does mean we gotta get this off the shelf and in practice, and we're gonna learn a lot this year. We're gonna gather some data, we're gonna learn a bunch. Done is better than perfect. Absolutely, let's get it going. So this benchmark year, it's our benchmark year of doing reviews. We don't want people to get too worked up about them. Um, they're very important, but the most important thing was getting them off the table, getting them done. And so I think there'll be some good things there that we will be able to share with you in the future. All right, let's rate some beers, Matthew. This 11% um, or usually- Is I, laser I, bean? I, I found a correlation when it's a higher ABV. Guess how he rates it. So let's hear Matthew on a scale of one to five. What do you feel with laser bean? Four, seven, five. I'm, I'm, I'm going Whoa. like way out of the park. Coming in on super this hot. One. Like it's coming in hot. Well, it's also, it's also environment. It's also, <laughs> we're, we're live at Sweetwater at 420. At Sweetwater 420. Like, I mean, come, I mean, come on. on. Can you beat this? Um, yeah. Kenji doesn't even know what his beer's called, so I'm just I saying. I know I'm it good. is their collaboration beer that is a Belgian hazy IPA mix, which is crazy. It's, it's super good. 4.5 right here. We'll go back and rate them and untap. So check back and untap. We'll put them up in there. Um, cheers, everybody. Thanks for following. Thanks for subscribing. Hope to see a bunch of you next week. Well, it'll be this, this drops on Friday after ZeroCon. That's true. So we had a great ZeroCon. We did. I know we did. Be... I know we had a great ZeroCon, even though that's next week, even though this is dropping after ZeroCon. Okay. Hit that subscribe. Send us uh, some recommendations of topics you want to discuss or ask questions of what we're doing at Acuity. And uh, if you want to come on the show, just let us know or just send us some beer. Cheers, everyone.